who had given such power to men. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. We are uncomfortable in any situation in life in which we feel powerless. It can lead to anxiety and that in turn to anger at our seeming insufficiency. You know, the feeling of worthlessness or even a kind of a depression. Finally, despair. I think, well, what can I do anyway? You don't need to feel that way. He has given such power to men. The words in this gospel. We know that our faith, St. John assures us, is that which has overcome the world. That's the harnessing of an awful lot of power. And we know that with prayer, all things are possible. And we know that with this blessed prayer, we honor today one of the most powerful of all prayers after the Mass and the Sacraments, to the Church's sacred liturgy and office, the prayer of the Holy Rosary. We know that this prayer, an awful lot, is possible. Now, when we pray, when we harness this power, it is not to subject God and his will to our own whims. It is not somehow to manipulate things in our own favor. It is rather so that in every circumstance of life we can do something about it. That is to say that we can let God, who is all-powerful, but who waits for us to pick up those beads and to start to pray, intervene, for all of life's great needs. And when you do so, then all of a sudden, you do feel that you're in the loop. You do feel, I'm not a loser anymore. And more than that, with this kind of power, you feel at peace. As when the Savior stood up in the boat, and he rebuked the wind and the waves, and there came a great calm over all. It is in God's hands, whatever it is, just as surely as that rosary is in my hands. And I, I am doing my best. You know that our Blessed Lady gave a series of wonderful rosary promises to the Blessed Alan of the Dominican Order. There is a story told about him that once, when he was, in his own defense, recovering from a very serious illness, he had a terrible temptation to commit a mortal sin. And he was just about to give way to that temptation when he felt a slap on his cheek. If you had asked me, I would have helped you. A woman's voice. He recognized it. It was Our Lady, the same Lady who had spoken to him, giving him the promises of the Rosary. Even though he didn't pray then, he did pray every day, and it is the habitual prayer that counts. What a wonderful protection that is. Our Lord also told Blessed Alan that if only poor, wretched sinners... To be wretched, by the way, means to have no sense of gratitude to others. It's a very popular sin. If only poor, wretched sinners would share in the merits of my passion, I would be their advocate, and I would appease my Father's justice for them. The rosary, properly prayed, provides help not only for individuals, but for all of society. This is the teaching of the Pope of the Rosary, Leo XIII, who began the October devotions. Power. This past week, I was giving the retreat to the seminarians in Detroit, and I was thinking to myself, in a few days, it will be October 
month of the rosary. And I was looking forward to it almost as a hungry man would to getting something to eat, as a man who is defenseless to get his hands on a weapon. Because the rosary is just such a powerful prayer. We opened our season this year with the 40 hours prayer, the blessed sacrament, most powerful of all. And you know how that works. If you were to open the season with our Lord in the blessed sacrament, chances are the devil may declare open season on you. Sometimes the better your prayer is, the more I am afraid you attack, you attract the notice of old scratch. And the devil may plan a strategy or two against you. Never mind what power is ours. And now, to be impartial, I will quote both Carey and Bush. Bring it on. I just learned the other day that that's actually black street talk. But in this circumstance, it seems quite appropriate, doesn't it? Bring it on, old devil. No matter what you have against us, our church, and our faith and our families, we are ready. It is October. We are determined solemnly daily here to pray our rosary. And I know many of you will be praying it together as a family at home. We know Sister Lucy of Fatima says this, The Most Holy Virgin in these last times in which we live has given a new efficacy to the recital of the rosary to such an extent that there is no problem, no matter how difficult it is, temporal or especially spiritual, in the personal life of each one of us, of our families, of the families of the world, or of the religious communities, or even of the life of peoples and of nations that cannot be solved by the rosary. There is no problem, I tell you, no matter how difficult it is, that we cannot resolve by the prayer of the Holy Rosary. Surely, the problems that we face, and the possibilities this autumn. There is a national election going on. We are feeling more pressure every day from the force of the one-worlders who want to draw us into that new one-world religion and have such terrible designs upon our land as well. The conspiracy breathes and manipulates mightily beyond, behind the scenes. We feel the force of it. And then we look around, and we see only disunity and division, the rosary. You know, this feast comes from that great victory which saved Christian civilization in the 16th century, the Battle of Lepanto. The Battle of Lepanto almost never occurred, and the Muslims would have swept right into Europe. Why? Because every Christian king and ruler was fighting his own battle in his own backyard, and no one would work with anyone else to form an alliance. St. Pius V sent out St. Francis Borgia. The trip killed him, literally. And it seemed to be unsuccessful in trying to persuade the rulers to make an alliance for the common interest. But finally, because of the prayer of the rosary, Don Juan was able to form that alliance to get that naval fleet together, which conquered against incredible odds stacked against them. Because they prayed the rosary, and then they prayed the rosary again, and the battle of victory was given to them. It is the same thing, I assure you, for anything that we face as a nation, as a church, at St. Gertrude the Great, and for our families. There is a power in this prayer, the prayer of the most holy rosary. Now, there is a power here. But you know, there is also pain here. Yes, pain. If the rosary were not a pain for most of you, you'd be saying it every day. If it were sure pleasure, you'd rarely miss it, I assure you. 
Oh, certainly we give the rosary lip service, and if only we would, because just to say it with our lips is already a lot. But the fact of the matter is, it's hard for us to get it said alone or even with others. Let us say the rosary, because Our Lady does ask at Fatima for peace, that there should be penance, just the penance of daily duty. What is more of a duty every day than to pray, to meditate on these mysteries of the gospel. The scripture come alive, the life of our Lord, our Lady, in the rosary mysteries. Today is also the feast day of the little flower, St. Therese of Lisieux. She is always in our sanctuary there, and today she's got two candles and some roses in front of her, because she promises a shower of roses after her death. Let's ask her for help with the rosary. She had a hard time saying the rosary. Some days the nuns were to say it by themselves, and she was reluctant to do so. She said she could only do so at the point of self-conquest. She said for her to say the rosary by herself was more difficult than the application of an instrument of penance. You know, back then religious would have like a little kind of like a little lash or a whip. And several times a week in their cells, they would scourge themselves. And it stung. They weren't supposed to bleed, but but it, it hurt. She said, imagine Just to say the rosary was that hard for her because she said, in vain I meditate on the mysteries. I cannot keep my mind on them still. I just cannot meditate. Still, she persisted, even though at times it seemed that she got very little out of it. At times, there are difficulties in praying the rosary in a group. True, it's easier in a sense if others are with you. That way you know you're going to get it said. But then, too, it can be a pain. It can be a real penance. Any of you have ever tried to get the family rosary going at home know that's true. There's a wonderful story, kind of a reflection in today's bulletin. I want you to read it. It's written by a traditional Catholic grandmother. Years of family rosary experience, as you know, the... You finally start and then the dog starts barking, or the kids start misbehaving, or the phone rings, or the older children who are living at home look at you with kind of a look and they say, well, you know, I've got my own life, and I've got to go here and I've got to go there. And it always seems that to get the rosary going is kind of a fight brewing. But to say the rosary with others was sometimes hard as well for the little flower. The quiet of the Carmel cloister was sometimes broken by one of her neighbor nuns who had these, these big old wooden beads and she would click them sort of distractingly. Click, click, click. And again, poor little flower, she could never concentrate on her prayers. Here in church, I have to confess, I was thinking of it this weekend, um, that to say the rosary with you all can be a terrible penance for me. Um, there's the battle of the beads. That is to say, who's going to lead the responses the loudest of all? Now, we Catholics are notorious for being unable to pray out loud together. Most of us just manage to mumble quickly the syllables. Sometimes they get swallowed entirely of our prayers. But there are always a few who have their own way of praying, but perhaps slower or louder than the rest. And the result is a cacophony of noise, which is hardly inducive to meditation. Your voice should not stand out. The rosary is not a solo performance when recited in a group. Remember, it's called Mary's Psalter. These are psalms that are meant to be, as it were, chanted in the background to help your mind and heart to meditate. So... Please pipe down. Your rosary won't be any of the more pious for it being louder than your neighbor. And it's not our job to corral our fellow Catholics to get them to say their Hail Marys a a certain way. We should all try to pray so that we may all pray and meditate. But still, if you won't, 
I will try to be faithful to our public rosaries, especially this month, because I know that the power of the rosary is not diminished by the fact that sometimes it is a penance, even though it would be nice to meditate a little bit more. St. Therese, after a long period of discouragement with her, with her rosary, she finally saw, that, and this is the truth of it, that the Blessed Mother accepted her goodwill. And that's all that matters. I assure you, that is all that matters for us. She grasped the heart and the point of this devotion. Once, when she was praying in, in the garden at uh, this year, she had a kind of a feeling that the Blessed Mother put her veil over her head. And she said that for days afterwards, no, no matter what she did, like working in the kitchen, whatever, she felt that it was the Blessed Mother doing it for her. And that made her understand the doctrine of St. Louis de Montfort. The more I live in Mary, the more I am united to Jesus. The more I make myself little, the more Mary can carry me and unite me to him. In her, we, all of us, all the children of the world, are formed into Jesus. When I am saying the rosary, that is what is happening. She, talk about power, she forms me into the most powerful man in the world because he is not only a man, but he is a God. And it is into the shape of our Lord Jesus Christ that this mother of us both is forming us by the rosary. May God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.